Architecture is an art form. You absolutely have to have the ability to keep your eye on the ball. Episode 89. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. This is Enoch Bartlett Sears, and this is your show, Architect Nation, or rather, Architect Family, because you truly are my family, and I love having you here with me every week as we talk about the business of architecture. Now, my mission here is simple, and that's to help you succeed as an architect and as a designer. I invite you to join me here with over a thousand weekly listeners as I go behind the scenes with successful architects and others to learn their best tips and strategies for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. To get insider tips and secrets on running a great practice, visit businessofarchitecture.com and create your free account. As a member, you'll get access to resources that I don't share on the website, including the Business of Architecture Report, which is my email newsletter with tips for building a profitable practice. Now, I'm pretty excited to share today's episode with you. Every podcast host or interviewer has the dream of bringing a big name onto the show. And today, for the first time ever, I'm releasing an interview I did over one year ago with one of the titans of modern architecture. Today's guest is Tom Main, leader of the world-renowned architecture firm Morphosis. Now, he's here with us today on the Business of Architecture to give his thoughts on practice and the business of architecture. And today's episode is a short one. It's only about 10 minutes long, and the auto quality is worse than I'd like. I interviewed Tom Main at the 2013 AI convention, and I didn't have the benefit of a studio environment, so I apologize for that. But what it lacks in length and sound quality, I think it makes up for in content. You'll find Tom Main's reflections on the business of architecture to be interesting and thought-provoking, especially since he's one of the leading architects of our age. But first, I want to give a special thanks to Matthew Moreno and the iTunes listener with the handle C2E1000 for leaving reviews on iTunes. I'm going to read those out here. Uh, Matthew says, I've been out of school for only a year, and I'm always looking to learn more about the architectural profession. I recently passed my CDS section of the architecture registration exams and realized how little young architects and students know about the business side of the profession. That's why this podcast is invaluable. It provides us with the sit-down discussion that we've been looking for to questions like, how do I start my own firm? Or what can we do differently as a profession to demonstrate our value and get paid for it too? This is a must for anyone looking to open their own firm or interested in the business side of the architectural profession. Thanks, Enoch. Well, thank you, Matthew. I appreciate you taking the time to give your thoughts and congratulations on taking your AREs and getting the CDS section out of the way. So I also want to thank C2E1000 is a handle here on iTunes, who says Enoch Sears is an indispensable part of any and certainly my small architectural practice. Enoch asks great questions to his guests who are well chosen for their knowledge and passion. And then he asks the follow-up questions that delve deeper. Enoch and his guests teach me more about the business end of my practice than I ever learned in school. I started listening maybe nine months ago, and now I'm making time to catch up on the previous 50 or 60 shows. In summary, the show is first rate for three reasons. One, consistently great guests, two, great dialogue, questions and follow-up questions, and three, Enix low-key, professional yet casual manner. Well, hey, thanks a ton for that. I really appreciate that. If you do enjoy the show, please head on over to iTunes, leave your review there, and I'll make you world famous as well here on the Business of Architecture podcast. (laughs) You can also leave a review on Stitcher, uh, which is an awesome app that I enjoy using, and uh, you can find Business of Architecture there as well. Now, if you know someone that you think should be featured on the business of architecture, or perhaps you have a great story that you think would make a good fit for the show, drop me a note at enoch at businessofarchitecture.com. I'm looking for more guests that have more interesting things to share with the architect nation here on the show. So once again, if you have any connection to someone you think should be on the show, or you have a story that you want to tell and be on the show, that'd be great. Uh, When you're interviewed on the show, there's a couple benefits. I'm going to put a link from my website back to your your website, which is going to give you some SEO juice, plus you're going to get added exposure, and of course you're going to be exposed to the thousands of business of architecture faithful. 
Now, I want to thank the sponsor of today's show, of course. You're very familiar by now if you listen to my show with BQE Software. They're developers of ArchiOffice. Architects from firms large and small are currently using ArchiOffice to help make their practices more efficient and their projects more profitable. So go check them out over at ArchiOffice.com. Now, on with today's show and my interview with Tom Mame, FAI. We discuss how business relates to architecture or perhaps it doesn't relate in this case. I'll let you be the judge. I mean, you realize that um, architecture as a business is, um, I'm trying to think, who would you relate it to in other businesses? Probably maybe only cinema. Yeah? In that um, there's this huge divide between um, the business of architecture and the um, architecture as a cultural act, the art of architecture. Yeah. And you can say that with cinema. You can say that with um, probably uh, television. If you say, look at what happened with uh, HBO in the last X amount of years, that has put on really edgy, very high quality programming that went after the networks who just seemed to die over 20 years. All right? And this is about business, it's about marketing, because television sells ads. It's not about program, it's about, about advertising. And, and so the, to begin with, you're dealing in this, this um, kind of a complicated territory that the, the, the profession divides. And of course, you're talking to one of the people that's, that's interested in the um, architecture as an art form. And so I'm gonna, um, my departure point would be either Corbusier or me, so I'm gonna talk about our, right, my architecture training, or it's gonna be Duchamp or, or uh, ARP, right, yeah. um, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and the business is, business, um, architecture is revenue producing, is completely secondary. But I think what's confused with a lot of people, because then they say, oh, the artists aren't dealing with money. To run a practice of architecture as an art form, you absolutely have to have the ability to keep your eye on the ball. It's absurd, right? Because it's an extremely tough notion of keeping it alive. So you have your um, your studio that um, is your playpen, is the place where you can explore and invent ideas, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's not that it's, it's an either or at all. It's just that it's not the priority. The priority is the work. And I started my practice when I was quite young. I was 20 years old. And I've always focused on the work, right? At the same time, I happen to have a, a magic weapon. My, my wife has been my financial person during the crucial years as we developed over 20 years. And it's not that I didn't have somebody that was incredibly sophisticated running a business, especially today. I entered the market when architecture became global. So my first work was in Austria and Japan, et cetera, et cetera, and, and Canada. And it represented some um, fairly sophisticated financial dealings, right? In right. terms of the practice that I had to have help, help from. But um, the, the difference is your whole approach to practice and my Total 100% concern is my work, period. Simple, not yeah. complicated, right? Yeah. And um, if I was a painter, I'd be the same way. If I was a sculptor, I'd be the same way. Yeah. And uh, if I was a filmmaker, absolutely. And so I look at um, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And if I remember right, it took 10 or 15 years to find somebody that would make that film and end up being, of course, one of the major films of the 20th century. Yeah. Um, I'm going to identify with that, right? Yeah. It, starts with, it starts with the quality of the thing. And you do the best you can to develop a product that's, now I'm using your language. Yeah. You develop something that's as, um, it speaks, it has a voice, and it addresses issues that represent um, your focus on the, um, the potential of architecture of interacting with society, socially, politically, culturally, environmentally, urbanistically, infrastructurally, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. And everything else is secondary. Um, I have no interest in in wealth, it's not in profitability. Um, at the same time though, it's not either or. I take care of my people. If you look at my office and ask people how I take care of them, um, I'm a realist, we, we have to make a living. Architects get paid ridiculous amounts of money. They're all educated. I get people out of the best schools in the world. And um, it's an absurd, obscene profession in terms of um, business, yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. Right? And then that's one discussion. There's another conversation about the profession. And I think, again, it seemed as though I entered in the 70s. Architecture was being run by the legal 
by lawyers. And they were doing do they were doing less and less work, and they were producing more and more generic. They were trying to get rid of risk, and that was absolutely killed the profession. And I think what's happening now is that with with um, computation, with the digital environment, with BIM, um, we're getting more and more involved in construction in the in the um, in the in the in building, which is taking on risk. And again, if you're going to look at people that are interested in um, making a living. No risk, no, no fees, and it's absurd to think you can you can bail out on risk and have a profession, so right? You're proponent and that's for taking oh, more risk. oh oh oh, absolutely. And I've for me it came naturally because I started with small projects and we built yeah. our projects, and um, and I've always adhered to the European model or maybe in Japan where the architect is a builder and you're you're on the site and you're making decisions and in fact you're eliminating risk. That's the whole point because you have the intelligence of understanding um, constructional processes and all of the alternatives that led to each of the systems as they act integratively. Why would you want someone else to start that when you've had a team usually working from a year to a year and a half on a design, including your whole engineering group that has already done that? Why would you want somebody doing that fresh or contractor? And by the way, would you think the engine, the construction group would get people that are more knowledgeable than architects that have to translate these things. And I'd say, absolutely not. Yeah. Of course not. Anybody coming out of a school, the top of the class wants to work for an architect. Sure. You're looking at somebody, sure. you're gonna move down the, the food chain. Maybe not now, because what's happening now is uh, because of um, 3D stuff, mm-hmm. the sophistication with construction is going way up. And there's getting to be a parody. You're working with sophisticated contractors, and it's the same kid out of Cornell, out of Harvard, out of Yale, that now has opportunities to interact within a much more complex environment. And that's usually positive what's taking place in the practice right now. Make sense? And you're and you're you're sharing risk essentially. Sure. And um, and again, we're in a culture that's so risk adverse. Yeah, absolutely. That's a much more difficult culture to build buildings than is it in Europe or other places of the world, and that. um, it seems to be at the forefront of a lot of the conversations, which in itself is a question mark. Why, why is that, has anybody been a study to say there's somehow more problematics in construction in this country than there is in other countries? And I would say absolutely not, probably the opposite, that there's yeah. an extremely um, sophisticated technical knowledge here. But it's, it is in the air, whatever. It's the way our culture operates, because we live in such a litigious, it's the power of law in this country. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of our culture that we have to live yeah. with. And that is the end of my interview with architect Tom Main. I'm interested in your thoughts on our conversation. Head on over to businessofarchitecture.com to leave your thoughts on this episode or leave a review on iTunes. Let me know what you got out of this. You can also drop over onto the Business of Architecture Facebook page and leave your thoughts on what Tom Main shared about the Business of Architecture and his career in design. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use Internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.